Hey guys, I got three lessons takeaway from UFC Japan last night. Uh, Barnett versus uh, Big Country. Uh, that was the main event. Um, so I watched these fights and I got three huge takeaways that you can use as a martial artist to make your martial arts training fighting skills better. Okay, three. Number one, um, keep your chin down. Keep your chin down. If you're a karate guy, like so many karate guys, they have their chin up because when they're doing katas and forms, they're used to keeping their chin up. Urgh, urgh. They're, 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 it, I don't know why they do that because, well, one thing, when they spar, they're only allowed to spar to the body, so they don't need to protect their chin that much. And they get into such bad habits, they raise their chin up and they punch straight. So their punches are great, a lot of power, except for bringing the hand back here, but they keep their chin up. Okay, you need to keep your chin down in combat sports where people are trying to punch you in the chin. Okay, that's the number one place that's gonna put you to sleep, the chin. You can get knocked out anywhere, but the button is the chin. That's gonna knock you out the quickest. Like you can get hit you know, hard, hard, hard in the head, chances are you get a little dizzy, you might get knocked out, maybe. But if you get hit hard on the chin, you're going to sleep. That's the button. So you want to protect that chin at all times. And one way you do that is keep your chin down. This guy that fought Brandon, uh, he fought um, Brandao, Diego Brandao. Uh, his name was uh, Kikunu. Um, he was a great karate guy, but they're so used to just protecting their body, they keep their chin up. His chin was way, way, way up. So you want to keep your chin down all the time. There's a, couple, there's a couple drills. Like when you're sparring, get anything, like a watch band. Either put it under your chin like this or just put it between your chin and your shoulder. So it helps bring your shoulder up and your chin down. And you shadow box like that. And just shadow box two, three rounds like that every day so it automatically comes down because... This is a bad habit to get into when you're punching, your chin up here, okay? So, chin down, very important. You can even use a knife. Put your chin here with the knife. When you're doing that, don't put the sharp blade by your carotid artery, though. Don't do that. I tried it once, okay? Don't do that. So, if you're going to use a knife, use the dull end against your neck. I'm joking. Don't do that because I'm going to get sued. All right, so that's lesson number one. Keep your chin down, and that was the Brandau fight. Okay, lesson number two, very important lesson. I teach this lesson so much. It's one of my most taught lessons. Spinning back kick, spinning back kick, spinning back kick, spinning back kick. Teach it, drill it, practice it all the time. Practice it in different scenarios. Jump spinning back kick, spinning back kick after roundhouse kick. Set up the spinning back kick. You want to practice the spinning back kick. It's one of the most effective, powerful kicks that you'll be able to throw in, in, in martial arts. Um, you saw Uriah Hall's fight last night against Gegard Musasi. Really good fight. He lost the big first round big. He was held down. He lost the, fir the first round big. Second round, jump spinning back kick landed in the face. It usually lands and knocks people out to the body because it hurts so much. It just knocks the wind out of them. But a lot of times guys are going to change their levels for a shot. You might catch them spinning back kick right to the face. And that's what Uriah Hall did last night. Spinning back kick, spinning back kick, spinning back kick. That's lesson number two. Practice it often. All right. Lesson number three. I've gone over this one a thousand times too. It's so important. Roy Nelson against Josh Burnett's uh, fight. I think it came down to conditioning. That was a huge one. And I don't know why anyone would fight in the UFC, especially a five-rounder, and not train their ass off. But conditioning is so important because in a street fight, in a cage fight, in a ring fight, once your gas tank is empty, once your conditioning is done, no matter what you have, how much power you have, how much timing you have, how much skill you have, it goes away. Once your tank is empty, you got nothing left. It's like you can be driving 
the fastest, most powerful car in the world, and once the gas is empty, it goes nowhere. It's useless. And that's how you are if you run out of gas. So train hard if you're going to fight. Train hard if you're a martial artist. Okay, because if someone jumps you in the street, you never know. You want to keep that level of conditioning up. You want to keep your fitness up. And that's also good for your health. You're a healthier person. You're a more vital person. You're more productive. So keep your conditioning up. That's lesson number three. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being part of the pit.